being myself, accepting myself If no one calling me beautiful, I said it myself Yeah, cause it is time that we should face this Doesn't matter if a man is but the two races He could rap both races to the fullest Haters saying otherwise, they evidently clueless I'm biracial and I'm proud now we're learning a Riverview man accused of nearly killing his entire family may have threatened them before the incident. News Channel 8's Corey Davis joins us now live from the Tampa News Center. Now, Corey, there is a lot of evidence that's shedding light on Ronnie O'Neill III. Hey, Josh, good evening to you, most definitely. And the evidence is all here in roughly two dozen CDs of interviews and documents painting a picture of what may have led to the killings. Family of Kenyatta Barron and her nine-year-old daughter, Ronivia O'Neill, are still mourning after their murders back in March. These newly released photos show Ronnie O'Neill III, just after Hillsborough deputies say he killed his girlfriend and daughter, tried to murder his young son before setting the house on fire. The charges show that deputies believe O'Neill was able to think this out. We're now hearing in interviews just released that some people didn't see any signs of trouble at the home until screams for help that night. Others say O'Neill threatened his girlfriend in the past and was seen on the roof yelling well before the incident. The night of the murders, deputies say he made a 911 call ranting about demons, calling Kenyatta by her nickname, Kiki. 911, what is your emergency? Hey, I've just been attacked by some White demons inside with this guy, Kiki. Kiki, her name is Kiki. And she tried to kill me. And what I, you huh? Kenyatta called 911 begging for her life, while deputies say O'Neill yelled Allah Akbar in the background. New evidence shows that there may have been tension over his efforts to convert the family to Islam. And O'Neill has spoken out several times in court, at one point saying the media is portraying him as, quote, a menace to society. Doctors now say he's incompetent to stay in trial. And just a couple days ago, he was moved to a state hospital where, where he'll stay until he's fit to come back. Live in the Tampa News Center, Corey Davis, News Channel 8. Before I get started on this clearly crazy piece of shit here, I want to say that just because some fucking psychopath yells Allahu Akbar before committing some heinous act doesn't make him a Muslim. His actions were against Islam. Astaghfirullah. Now, I listened to this man's fucked up story several times from several different news outlets. Him and the mother of his child were no longer together. He was recovering from a bullet wound. And none of his family wanted to take him in. So he called the mother of his child and begged her to stay with her while he recovered. And like the innocent, caring person she was, she said, okay. And this man proceeded to unalive her. And then he tried to unalive his son. And he unalived his nine-year-old daughter. There is something really wrong with these kings. He tortured and terrorized his family before he underlived two of them. And his son survived. But what type of life is he going to have? There's a story where his son was adopted by the detective of the case. But the mental trauma that that boy is going to have for the rest of his life is beyond comprehension. But let's say their names, Kenyatta Barron and Ranivia O'Neill. More victims of a brutal Kang. More victims of domestic violence at the hands of a Kang. And then when this Kang went to court, this is what he said. I am not sorry for something I didn't do. And I am not sorry for the things I did do. Mr. O'Neill, I'm not, right. listen, stop right, stop, right. listen to me. I'm not, I'm You're not, not going to raise your voice again. I'm not, not going to raise my voice again. again. But I will say, I'm sorry for your loss. No remorse. A normal person wouldn't have done that in the first place. But a normal person would feel guilty, would be haunted by those actions. 
He is not sorry. He's sorry he got caught. He's sorry he's going to prison and he will rot and die like he deserves in prison. But he's not sorry for unaliving his daughter. He's not sorry for unaliving the mother of his children. He's not sorry for trying to delete his son. He is a heartless demon. And the truly crazy and sad thing about this is that there are countless Ronnie O'Neills free right now in these streets. There are countless Ronnie O'Neills terrorizing black women and children right now in these streets. There are countless Ronnie O'Neills right now who are not sorry for the horror they inflict on black women and children, for the horror they inflict on people's families and their communities. How many more Kenyatta Barons do there have to be? How many more Ranivia O'Neills do there have to be? And the only silver lining that came out of this horror story was his son, who he stabbed and burned. Ronnie was just nine years old when he witnessed the unthinkable. His father savagely murdered his mother and sister. The horror from that day was captured in a 911 call as mom begged for her life. I remember feeling scared, not knowing what was going on, why this was happening. Then his father, Ronnie O'Neill oh, III, Ronnie. turned on the youngster, stabbing him 20 times and setting him on fire. In June, O'Neill was tried for, for murder. So go over and take y'all time looking at it yourselves to see whether I'm lying or not. Acting as his own attorney, he actually cross-examined his own son. And how did I hurt you? You stabbed me. I stood my ground. O'Neill was found guilty and was sentenced to life in prison by a judge who could barely hold back her contempt. I'm going to look the eye and tell you this is the worst case I have ever seen. And now this story takes a remarkable turn. Ronnie has been adopted by Detective Blair and his wife, Danielle. He is their sixth child. He set out to wipe out his entire family stabbed his own son 20 times and then set him on fire. And then his son survived, came to court, looked his father in the fucking eye and said, you stabbed me. That young boy is brave. That young boy has heart. That young boy is a miracle. And he found a home. That detective and his wife took him into their home, adopted him. And they had five other kids already. And though this story is tragic, the things that Kangs do to their family, to their women, to children, is horrifying. But his son finally got a father he deserves. And um, I got to apologize. I know I was all over the place on this one. This one was hard for me. It, it was tough. Y'all know I'm a father of six. The things this man did to his children and the mother of his children deeply troubled my soul. And the complete lack of remorse troubled my soul. But you won't see any of those Manosphere reaction channels talking about these things, talking about the horrors these kings put black women and children and their community through. Those Manosphere Reaction channels will talk about black women all day, point out every single flaw that they can find, yet ignore the monsters that create those flaws. Ignore the fact that women and children every day are dealing with the trauma of surviving a Ronnie O'Neill. Be safe, all. I love you. I have so many unanswered questions. 